Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're going to talk about sequential transmissions. If you look into the different transmission options out there in the world for automobiles, you have a standard synchronized manual gearbox. You can have a dual clutch automated gearbox with a wet, it's got an actual wet clutch instead of a torque converter. You can have an automatic trans that has a torque converter and you can have a sequential gearbox. Automatic transmissions have their place and a lot of uh, drag racers will rely on an automatic trans because the torque converter done correctly and three forward gear ratios, you can have a very effective race car that's consistent and is fairly low maintenance. The DCT trans is very special because it has the next forward gear already selected and the gear changes are lightning quick and it's, a, it's an OEM level engineered system. So they work really well, although launching them at a drag strip is always a bit tricky because the wet clutches don't slip terribly well. A regular standard issue synchronized gearbox is great. It works well for all of us. Uh, in a lot of capacity because it's what we've all grown up with if you're a stick guy. Uh, the synchronizers have their limitations when it comes to really high speed uh, gear changes at high engine speeds because you're working against the synchronizer. And the one up from that would be going to a dog box where you have dog engagement. The synchronizer is now gone and you just have these dogs that quickly engage and disengage, although that adds a certain amount of noise, vibration, harshness that comes with a dog box. But in a drag racing environment, a manual trans with a slipper clutch and a dog box is very hard to beat. And the next would be a sequential. Sequentials have a lot of history in different circuit racing and rallied racing uh, arenas. They're highly effective because the driver can make lightning quick, precise gear changes without ever having to deal with a missed shift and you can have ratios that are tailored towards keeping the engine in its window of operation. So if you have a small displacement turbocharged engine that makes really good power from say 6,000 RPM to 10,000 RPM, you can gear the car accordingly where it's never gonna fall out of power on a gear change. Another advantage with the sequential is with the very fast gear changes, a low displacement turbocharged engine doesn't have to recover to come back into power. So you don't have a big power interrupt that you would have with other style transmissions. The sequential transmission bridges the gap between a manual transmission and a DCT by having a fairly automated shifting system. A sequential transmission can be controlled by either a manual lever that just goes back and forth or by a control box with paddles. The paddle situation is a little bit uh, more advanced because it can prevent the driver from having an, a downshift at a speed that would put the engine over its speed limit. So there's a little bit of safety to be had there if you have a paddle shift system versus just a manual lever. As you may have seen recently, the TRC RSX now has a Quaif sequential gearbox. With its two liter K-series engine and Precision 6466 turbo, you have fairly interrupted gear changes. So you have power delivery that's fairly consistent. Whereas if you had a synchronized H pattern gearbox, you have to make your gear change and wait for the turbocharger to come back online. Now, depending on the turbo size and the response of the system, it may not be a big deal, but as you go up in power, you go up in turbo size, and then you go into the situation where you can have a gear change and the turbocharger has to physically recover to make boost again. The installation of a gearbox like this on a K-Series is fairly simple because you don't have to use any sort of adapter plate. This K-Series bell housing bolts directly to the engine block, so there's no question or concern for alignment issues uh, that you'd be associating with a custom adapter plate. As far as the control of the transmission itself, that's a bit complicated, and it uses a gear position sensor that tells the ECU exactly where the trans is in its gear change. So if you're going from say second gear to third gear, this sensor can track where you are in that gear change and through um, the MoTeC closed loop gear control, it knows when it should stop doing the ignition cut that you needed to make the gear change and start the reinstate phase where torque is being reapplied. So one of the ways that you can damage this gearbox in a very short period of time is not having a ECU that has correct control for the sequential box. You're gonna need a gear position sensor and a strain gauge and software that will properly understand the operation of the gearbox. Now, if you're gonna do blip downshifts, you're gonna need drive-by wire. So there's a bit of engine control that starts to incorporate. Whereas if you had a race car that had 
a automatic trans, you may get into some fluid management and um, possibly an air shifter. But with this, it's a bit of a different animal. So you've probably seen guys that do a sequential gearbox that just have a gear cut system off of a strain gauge. And that's fairly acceptable for drag racing only. But with the integration of the MoTeC closed loop gear control, you can have it where the ECU knows exactly what gear the trans is. I mean, right down to where the dogs are in engagement and when it's gonna reinstate power, which makes for a really good integration of this type of transmission in a car that uh, came with a factory manual trans. One of the downsides to a sequential gearbox is they're not great from a drag racing standpoint because they all have relatively tall first gears. So if you look at the numerical ratio of your standard gearbox and you look at um, you know maybe some uh, H pattern dog box offerings, you'll see that the sequential gearbox generally has a taller first gear. And the idea behind that is in circuit racing or rally racing, getting the car off the starting line is not a high agenda. It's mostly getting the car to be um, effective and the power delivery to be effective once the vehicle's in motion. So from a drag racing standpoint, this situation is not ideal because of the tall first gear ratio. If you go back into that dog box conversation, uh, in a perfect world, we'd all be dealing with slipper clutches, although, most front wheel drive offerings um, in most sanctioning bodies have outlawed slipper clutches, so we don't really have access to that. But the rotating mass of the engine and the clutch do have an effect on the trans when it comes to gear changes, and that segues right into torque management. So for those of you that have broken a manual transmission before, they all break on a gear change because you have this inertia when you, especially if you're flat shifting, so you'll push the clutch in, keep the accelerator floor, the engine speed will go up. And then all that inertia of the crankshaft, flywheel, clutch meets those gears as the clutch re-engages and you can brake stuff. So whether you're dealing with a modern eight or 10 speed automatic trans, those have torque reduction on the gear change. Same thing's gonna happen with this. During that reinstate phase, after the ignition cut has taken place, you can preset a time that the torque can come back in, allowing the drivetrain to settle before torque is fully reinstated. Even though all that's happening, it's still happening much faster and much more precise than a human operated H pattern shifter. If you're putting together a budget to put one of these Quave sequentials in your K powered vehicle, it comes with the shifter, but it does not come with the strain gauge or the gear position sensor. So at a bare minimum, you're gonna need the strain gauge because that's what's gonna initiate the gear cut to go to the next gear. If you have an ECU that does closed loop gear control, you're gonna want the gear position sensor because this sensor is gonna report back to the ECU where the transmission is in its range from reverse to high gear. In addition to these components, if you're gonna use the blip downshift feature, you're gonna to need to convert to drive by wire if your vehicle's not already drive by wire. For the RSX project, they were used a Civic Type R pedal and a TSX throttle body. Another thing worth noting is this transmission is available in either front wheel drive or all wheel drive configuration. So if you're building an all wheel drive project, they can ship you a bell housing that will allow you to bolt your Honda transfer case directly to it and both come with an LSD. These gearboxes do make more noise than a factory H pattern synchronized gearbox and that's gonna be a byproduct of the angles that the gears are cut at in terms of creating strength. So the gearbox only has a certain amount of distance from the main shaft to the counter shaft. And in order to get enough material on the gears to have a high power rating, there's some concessions made to noise and harshness. So this gearbox will not be as quiet as an OEM gearbox, nor will any dog style gearbox because you've got to put material into the product to add strength and that comes at a cost. Overall, this is a really exciting addition to the Honda market. When you look back uh, in the early days of turbocharged Honda racing, you know, there was a lot of power to be made, but not a lot of traction and the gearboxes were, you know, until the dog boxes became available, the gearboxes were an obstacle that you, you had to unfortunately face. So especially with the K-Series power plant where you could make a ton of power, but the gearboxes were really weak, you know, you're kind of stuck in a bind until the dog box options opened up and now you have this as an option. So 
in current times with modern turbocharging and powertrain parts, you can have a highly effective all wheel drive sequential K series based vehicle that is just an absolute rip to drive. So yes, I've driven it. Yes, it's as fun as it looks like it is. And it's, it's really an exciting addition to the market.